Hey everyone, this is Nikki from Messy Table Studio here with my MCY My Muse video for the month of December. I have recently, if some of you have not been watching, gotten into watercolor painting heavily into. I watercolor painted a long time ago, but it's not something that I did on a regular basis, kind of fiddled around with it here, there, and yonder. But recently I've discovered that I really do like this much better than acrylics, although acrylics do have their place in my art, but I really like watercolors. I like the softness of them. I like that they spread out and you can put layer after layer after layer of colors. So I was telling Gina Ahrens about this, who's also part of MCY, and she said, well, let me give you some samples of watercolor paper because I was lamenting how I didn't like the texture of some of the watercolor papers because my um, the nibs on my Micron pens take a beating. And I decided that I really don't want to ruin them. I'd like for them to last a little bit of time. So she said, well, let me send you different kinds of paper. So let me go over what she sent and then I'll show you what I've been doing. So she also sent me a little sample of her watercolors. So what I've been doing is I've been, uh, let's see what she sent me. She sent me a little palette that has different kinds of watercolor in it that she squeezed out of little tubes. I have some Daniel Smith and some Mirror Blue in here. And so what I did was, because I already have Primas and I didn't want to use Primas because I already know how they work on different surfaces. So I wanted to try these. Plus it was small and I didn't have to get crazy. So what I did was I took the paper that she sent me and I swatched all of the colors on every piece of watercolor paper, different kinds that she sent to me, so that I could see how the paint does with the textures of the watercolor paper. All right, so there's that. So this one is Arches 140 pound cold press. Cold press paper is not the smoothest paper you can use. Um, it is rather textured, but this is not heavily textured like some of the others I'm gonna show you. So this is Arches 140 pound cold press. I hear this is very popular and that if you're gonna buy it, it's not cheap. If you're gonna buy it, buy it with a coupon because that's 40% off and Listen, 40% off of something is better than nothing off of something. So there's this one. The next, whoops, where's my, I guess I didn't, okay. I'm sorry, I'm taking stuff out and I'm not sure where I'm going with anything here. The next one is Arches Hot Press Paper. No stinkers. <laughs> This paper I absolutely fell in love with. There are the swatches from the little set that she sent me there. I like this because it's smooth on one side and has a teeny bit of texture on the back, not as much as the cold press arches. But I, this is 140 pound. I really like this, really like this. So let me show you what I did with this one. I found a and a watercolor picture on Pinterest that I really was fascinated by because I want to combine my watercolor with doodling and this is great paper to do that with. It doesn't care up your nibs, although I did use an ink pen on this instead of um, the, the Micron pen because I know it's smooth enough. I know it'll be fine. So I took uh, some of the colors, the Prima watercolors and some of these and I painted this little picture of flowers. So I decided I wanted to use the same picture with different colors, but the same concept on every piece of paper that she sent. So here's the swatches, here is the painting. And I have to say that I really like the hot press paper. This is the textured size, this is the smooth side. I think it turned out very nice. All right, so that's those. And I don't want to get them mixed up because I might forget what paper's what. So I'm trying to keep the stuff together so I don't mess it up. And yes, it's going to get noisy because these are cellophane bags. All right, the next one is Canson 100-pound Bristol Vellum. 
This is new to me. I use Canson watercolor paper, but I have never, and mixed media paper, but I've never used Bristol, Bristol vellum. So there are my uh, samples. And oh, this is so smooth and wonderful on both sides of the paper. Very smooth. There is the watercolor that I did with it. Um, I think you're able to move stuff around freely on this, but it does not soak in as quickly as paper that has more cotton in it, like the arches. I did notice that part. But I'm very pleased with the way it looks. I mean, it doesn't look that much different than the other one. Everything's soaked in. This one I went a little heavy to see how many layers I could get in this, and I did either two or three layers of watercolor after they dry, and then I applied the other layer on top of it. But I think I got like three layers on here. So there's that. And there's this, and this stuff is wonderful. The Canson 100 pound Bristol vellum. I won't put that back in there, it just makes more noise. All right, Strathmore 300 series, 140 pound cold press. Why is it I struggle with trying to get these silly things open? All right, so here is the swatch, and you can, this is very textured. The back side is smooth, so I kind of like the papers where I can get a twofer. One side's rough, the other side is smooth, so if it's something that I want to doodle on, I can flip it over and use this side. If I just want some kind of watercolor where I don't plan on doing heavy doodling, or I'm not going to use a Micron pen, to me, the rough side is perfect for that. And here is the picture that I did compared to yet another picture. Basically, they all look the same. They took water really well. Some water soaked in these papers a little quicker. As you can see, there's a lot of cotton in this. And uh, the paint soaked in beautifully. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. Some of them I did more than one layer of paint. It soaked in just fine. So this, this to me is yet another winner. All right, so I've got some of this paper already, and I've been using this for a while. So I did not swatch or do a, a painting on this one, but this is the swatch. This paper is textured on the front and the back. This is the Fabriano Cold Press 140. You can buy this lots of places. I, I don't think it's overly expensive. Not as much as the arches, I'm sure. Um, I think it's an all-round general, general purpose sort of um, watercolor paper. That is what one of my watercolor books I'm working in now, I took apart, a ta I had a tablet, and I took it apart and cut it up and made it into a book to do watercolors on. It takes the water pretty well. It's got a lot of texture to it, and unless you cover up the layer after layer after layer, you're going to see the, the texture in your, in your paintings. If that's what you want to see, then this perf this paper is perfect for you. This is tough, tough paper on Micron nibs. I've already tried it, and it's a little rough. This is pen. I did all these in ink pen. And then the last one. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> I got to get this stuff out of these silly, silly bags. I don't, oh, too loud. This is the granddaddy. This is fluid 100, 300 pound cold press paper. And this is like a board. This stuff is sturdy as all get out. I did my swatching on this. It took water just fine. It soaks it up really well. I mean, really well. It's like this is very thirsty board. Um, 300 pounds, that, that's heavy. It's got texture, but not as much as the Fabriano and more than some of the arches. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do one of these watercolor pictures on, well, I guess I'll do it on this one. I'll do the, the um, Fluid 100, 300 pound cold press. I'll do it on this piece of paper right here. And so let me get ready and then I'll start. Okay, so while my video was uh, saving to the disc, I decided to do some reorganization. Uh, the sound of the cello bags every time I want to open and close them is really 
noisy. So what I did was I took my Canson and gave it a green paper clip and clipped the, you know, took the name off of the bag and put the swatch and the picture that I'd already done there. I gave the Strathmore a pink, did the same thing. Arches, I gave them both a red paper clip, so I know they're both the same brand. In case I lose the plastic off of it, I'll know it's an Arches. The Fabriano got a blue because I think if I remember correctly, most of the cover on the Fabriano is blue and it has some watercolor painting on it. And then the Fluid 100, I gave it a white. And this is what I'm going to do my sample on. Now I have, where is it? No, maybe not this one. Nope, I don't. Okay, so this is really thick paper and I cut this off of here. That's what it is. I cut this off of here. So I'm going to use my Primas and watercolor on this. Now this thing, like I said, this is a thirsty, thirsty paper. So I think I'm going to be good with like 20,000 layers of paint on it. So let's get started. I want to lay down very light. This one's called Sea Dream. I want to lay down very light color for the first layer. And you can barely see that, huh? Okay, let's bring it down. I'm so afraid I'm going to be out of frame if I bring guys too close. I'm really good at doing that. And then this. And then this. And again, I'm using the same flower shape that's in the Pinterest. Like I said, I will put it down below so that you can see what my example is. And then I might need something off to the side here. Alrighty. Of course, you know, I have my famous filthy paper towel. <laughs> Actually, this is a baby wipe that I repurposed. Got to get a little more time out of it. All right, so I want to use very light colors in the back and bring more of the bold colors in the front. So let's see, let's go up high. This could be lighter. Man, it's already soaked in, look at that. That's great. I'm thinking this is something where you, if you're going to put like 10,000 layers of color, this is the perfect paper. I don't know how much this cost. I have not been out shopping to see what the cost of these papers are. I'm only going on what I've been told. I know I bought Fabriano. I bought Canson, so I'm familiar with the prices for those. You can buy those at Michael's and Hobby Lobby uh, with the 40% off coupon. I suggest you do that with anything you buy for art supplies. Why fa pay full price? I mean, if you don't have to, you shouldn't. All right, so there's that one. I know people have been very fascinated, whoops, very fascinated by my nail bottle. I'm gonna say it again. It comes from the Dollar Tree and it's what nail people use in the nail salons for their nail polish remover. If you watch when you go in there and you get your nails done, they take long pieces of cotton, they rip it off and then they take this and they pump it and this is filled with nail polish remover. Mine is filled with water because it's basically like a non-messy way to watercolor paint when you're out of town. Take this little thing empty. You can put it in your purse, your carry-on luggage, as long as it's empty. And you're good to go. All right, so what other color do I want here? I think I might like a very faint... Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. I would like a very juicy faint number 17 from the Prima. Since these, this is pretty much dry, I'm going to, see, look at that. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I love this. Such great watercolor paper. All right, now this one's not as dry. See, it's already starting to spread. So that is unwanted. So let me back that off. 
And I might as well take a layer of this off too while I'm at it because it's a little too dark. I like these to be like the picture. They're kind of transparent. Let me hit this with a dryer real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, twice now my camera has shut off and saying that the memory is full. I don't know if it is or not, but it tells me it is, so I have to believe it because it shuts itself off. All right, this one right here needs to be toned down. I don't want it as dark as it is. So I'm going to try to move some of this paint around. Because I really meant for it to be more in the background than anywhere else. So once I notice, once the watercolor has soaked into this, it's a little hard to reactivate it so that you can move it around. If you're going to do it, you need a ton of water. See, I've done it like three or four times now, and it's not really moving the paint. So if you're going to use this, maybe you have, I'm sure you guys have different skills or better skills than me, and you can make the the paint move around, but it's not going, it's not moving, so I think that's going to stay. Let me dry. Okay, there was a lot of water on this one, and it took a bit of time to make that dry, so I'm not going to paint any more on this. I'm going to draw. So what I'm using is the Uniball Signo DX. This is the 0.38, so this is really a fine a fine tip, fine line. Close these paints and get it out of my way. All right, so let us draw. So I'm going to draw. I guess you can't see that, can you? All right, let's see if I can stay in frame. I'm going to draw the bottom. Now the picture that is on Pinterest is not exactly like this, but I'm okay with that. It gave me a place to start and I just kind of got, I've just played around with it. So if I stop talking, please don't get upset. It's because I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> I, I said in one other video, I don't know if I can walk and chew gum at the same time when I, the watercolor takes a little more concentration. All right, I'm going to use a micron pen to fill in the black here because doing it with this is, um, it beats the paper up. So this is a number eight micron pen. Let's see how it does over the watercolor. Not well. It does not seem to take well to the watercolor paper with the watercolor on it. So it does not do good coverage. All right, so I guess that's out. Let's try a jelly pen. I like the black jelly, so let's try jelly. This is a number six. Actually, I think I have a number eight in here somewhere. I want something with a little fatter coverage. There's number eight. All right, let's try eight. I think this is good and juicy. Oh yeah, Jelly Roll does much better on this paper than the Micron does, which is fine with me because I have a selection of them right above my workstation here so I can reach them anytime I need them. Yes, that's much nicer. I like that. Okay, so let me go on to the next ones. Should have left it at three instead of four, but I guess that's all right. Take this, color it in. Number eight is a fatter pen than a number six. And a number 10 would even be better because it has a bigger ball in it. I guess this is close to like, I don't know, would you say like a medium? It's not a fine tip. Not like this one is. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward through this part because I can't talk and do it at the same time. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm finished with this. Let me do a couple observations. Um, this does much better on it. The Micron pen does not because it soaks it up so fast that you have to uh, keep going over and over and that tears the nib up. The second thing is, is that once you put the watercolor down on this board, this goes over it, but it feels granular. So I'm wondering if that isn't the pigment from the paint that has dried and then it's, or maybe it's the bumpiness of the paper. I'm not really sure, but it feels funny under my hand when I run the pen over it. It just, maybe it is just the texture itself from the paper. Not really sure, but it just feels rather odd. So there is the bristle board. So if you have any questions, don't ask me, because <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> anyway, so that's my muse for the month of December for MCY. I want to thank everybody who tuned in all through the year and stuck with me when I did some really odd things and some fun things. I hope you enjoyed that. It's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot of stuff doing this every month, trying to come up with something a little different, something that I'm into at the moment, or maybe something I'd like to explore. And I've had a wonderful time. And I think that's really what your art is all about, is enjoying what it is that you do. And if it doesn't bring you pleasure or happiness or satisfaction, you need to try something different. You need to move on to a different craft or a different form of art that will bring you the pleasure, the happiness that you need to find. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in, and I really appreciate it. So I will see you guys in 2020. Thanks, everyone, and thank you, Gina. Bye.